my god it's been forever it's been about three weeks since i last made a video uh everything feels kind of out of rhythm but we're gonna get back into it um i kind of took like, a tiny break well i wouldn't say a break i was just really busy with a lot of background stuff and uh work's been really hammering my ass um in a good way um that sounded really oh my god i'm not restarting no we're not restarting that sounded really bad um, or disgusting, but we're gonna keep going. Today we're working on using uh, Protopie to create an onboarding process for a mobile application. The example you're looking at is what we're going to build. So it's a really neat uh, swiping kind of feature where you can go back and forth. You can also hit the next button and the illustrations are coming from Icon Zay and I do mention that in our video. Now, unfortunately, Protopie is not free. You can do a trial, but I truly recommend that you sign up if you want to take your prototyping or design game to the next level. It has a lot of neat features, and the examples I'm showing on the screen right now are just some of the things you can build using Protopie. And the way that I think it kind of outdoes other softwares like Adobe, um, specifically XD, or Framer. Um, and if we think about Envision Studio, now, hang on, Envision Studio is actually a really neat product but it is a bit laggy and clunky from the last time I've used it. But with Protopie, you can do uh, keyframing or sort of like this timeline where you can actually uh, work with the full capacity in terms of getting exact uh, numbers or exact specific animations to occur at exact times. You don't have that sort of restrictiveness that auto animate or I think, uh, what does Framer call it? This is bad because I've got special news with Framer in the future, but Motion, framer, motion, fuck. Ah, this is bad, hang on. Framer, I'm gonna skip this part. Magic, motion, I, I knew that. I was just getting it confused with other things. Uh, hopefully no one from Framer sees this, but uh, enough rambling, let's actually get into the project. Uh, go ahead and install Protopy if you haven't, and I do have the project files down below. Don't forget to leave a like, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, as always, have a wonderful day, take care of yourselves out there, and I'll see you in the future. So currently I am in the final project. I think that it's kind of good just to go through a breakdown real quick before uh, jumping on the starter files. Uh, but before we do that, I do want to mention the icons. I did not create these uh, by hand. Uh, a lot of the help, or almost all the help, came from Icons 8. I simply went to their illustrations path. Uh, I think they're calling it Ouch. But from here, you can grab several different icons. The one in specific that we used, um, which are illustrations, but you can kind of break them down into icons, um, is the one called Abstract by Icons 8. You can go to icons 8 forward slash uh, illustrations and I'll have this link in the description if you want to get uh, other types of illustrations uh, from designers from icons 8 and I believe you can upload your own. I'm not sure if this is all from icons 8 or not, but it's actually a really neat site. Um, one thing to mention is that it isn't free. It's only free for certain ones. The ones I used aren't free, but you're able to download a PNG rather than the SVG. Um, however, if you do pay a subscription cost, you can get the SVG files. But yeah, check out Icons 8 if you're looking for illustrations, a really neat site. So from here, what I can kind of do is just kind of go through the project real quick. I have the preview on the right hand side and then Protopie open up on the left hand side. Uh, the project files are broken down or the assets are broken down this left panel. If we check out this right section here, we kind of have the timelines of when the animations occur. And if you've never used Protopie in the past, it is pretty simple to get a grasp on. Uh, if you want to go ahead and design what you want to design in XD or Figma or Sketch, you can always import the assets here. The following assets I had done directly in Protopie. Um, since it is also a design tool or you could use it as a design tool as well But the way the project looks right now is what happens is if we swipe to the left certain animations occur and if we swipe to the left again Like I mentioned just different animations. So it's just a typical onboarding process uh, really easy to build and honestly uh, when it comes to presentations or uh, prototyping your application you do want to use something like Protopie just because it gives you the uh, highest amounts of capability in comparison to, you know, XD or Framer or 
uh, Figma. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to switch over to the starter files. I'll have both of them linked, the final and the starters. Um, if you want to just skip the video and just start playing around with the prototype, you can just download uh, the final files, which is just going to be called onboarding Pi, and then the starter will be called onboarding starter. So let's go ahead and switch gears. Okay, so we're currently in the starter files, and what I'm going to do real quick is just kind of break down the file format. At the very top, we have a progress. So if we zoom in here, uh, you can see that we have three kind of uh, rectangles which indicate what step we're on or what panel we're looking at. So right now, step one is active, uh, and then you have step two, step three, which are currently inactive. We have the skip, which you can kind of skip the onboarding process. In this case, it doesn't do anything. Uh, and then we have a button, which button is a text all the way down here. And what we currently do in Protopy is uh, select the text layer, and then we can customize the fill and the color here in this right section. I wonder if I could, I can't make that bigger. That's unfortunate. Okay. Uh, but that's the uh, button there. And then we've got a one, a two and a three. Now what one, two and three represent, let me go back to 125. Uh, what one, two, three represent is the actual panels or the section. So one is currently active. If I disable that or hide that and then show number two, this is the second. And then the third is this one right here. Now in the final prototype, the background color does change. And I do have a rectangle one, which just represents the background color. So we can adjust that as we go through the prototype. So the very first thing that I kind of want to do is you notice that the step one, step two, and step three are all layered on top of each other. Uh, what I want to do is add that swiping capability. So let's go ahead and hide two and three. And what I'll do is go to the top here and select this container dropdown. Now in the container dropdown, we can just select a normal container, a scroll container, and a paging container. What we're gonna do is select a paging container. Now using the paging container, this will allow us to uh, nest these steps inside the paging container and then allow us to have that swipe feature that we were looking at earlier. So if I just push this to the very top, we can just call this a swipe. And now the swipe container is set to that 100 uh, width and height, meaning that if we adjust the height um, to sort of like this portion, uh, what this means is that it's going to allow us to swipe left and right only within this area. If we set the swipe container to 100% for the height and the width, that means we can swipe anywhere inside of the iPhone device, um, exception of on top of the button. I'm gonna go ahead and allow us to swipe throughout the entire device except for up here and underneath the button. So what I'll do is set the height to around right here. So that's going to be a height of 709. And my mouse is acting up, it keeps messing up. But I'll set that to a height of 709, meaning we can only swipe left and right in this container. Now, if I go ahead and drop this step one as a sub layer into the swipe or as a child, uh, you'll see now that I can kind of just swipe back and forth, but it's got nowhere else to go. So uh, what we need to do is add additional layers so that I could allow us to swipe those additional layers. So I'll go ahead and turn on step two and then I'll set step two underneath step one. And from here, what we're going to need to do next is adjust the X of the initial state for step two. So step two is going to be far out to the right here. It's going to be pushed this far. And to kind of just use the exact dimensions, it's going to be 414, the exact dimensions of our device. So now if we run, and it should auto, re, uh, auto run every time we make changes, you can see that it flashes every time I make it adjustment. Uh, so now that we push this to the far right, we have our layer right here. Uh, you can see that if I start swiping, it will swipe to that next step. So Protopy makes this very, very easy. And honestly, it's, I mean, it's, it's super seamless. You don't need to write any custom code or anything. So now that you can swipe left and right, uh, one thing I do want to mention is in the swipe action here, we do have this clip sub layers enabled and clip sub layers. Uh, what this means is if the child is outside of the dimensions, kind of like a mass layer, it will then not show. So if I undo this clip sub layers, we'll then see uh, the uh, step two on our device here. Uh, this is totally optional, but if we are to kind of have like a flowing effect here, it would get cut off and you know, we don't necessarily want that. So we'll just leave the clip sub layer disabled uh, that way that we could kind of just see what's going on outside of the screen.
So I'll do the exact same thing that I did the step two with step three. I'll enable it. I'll set it as a child or a sub layer to the swipe. And then I'll move it to the far right until it's at 828, which is twice as much as the total width of the device, which is 414. So we'll set it there. If we go ahead and start swiping, you'll see now that we could swipe three times to reach the last screen. So now we have our kind of main action, uh, which is our swipe. We do have additional options for the swipe, but we don't want to mess with those um, in this case. So what it is, is that this container can be custom or sorry, the page by can be custom. You can see right now that the custom is 414, um, which is the exact same as the container. I leave it as container because the sub layer of each individual panel is a container. So one is a container, two is a container and three is a container as well. Uh, this means that what the scroll is going to do is when I swipe to the left, it's or sorry, when I swiped, yeah, when I swipe from uh, middle to left or to the left, it's going to add up the entire width of our container. If I decrease the container by, you know, any sort of amount, it's going to adjust that. So we can set custom like we did earlier. And just to show you what happens if we set this to 300, it's not going to get the entire second panel into view. So now if I swipe, it kind of gets only 300 pixels. We don't want that. Uh, we're going to leave it as container. And then our scrolling options, of course, you have scroll paging for none, scroll or paging. If we leave as scroll, we could swipe down and up. Uh, we can also change the direction. So now we can kind of go left and right. So this doesn't have that kind of fixed uh, setting to where it swipes. It's more of just scrolling through. So, I mean, this is definitely optional if you want something like this, but for our case, we are paging. So we'll set it back to paging. We'll set the page by container direction is left to right. And for the over scroll is this right here is right. You got this little bounce effect. Uh, if you don't want that, you can set that to none and you can no longer do that. I'll leave the bounce enabled just to show the user that, hey, you can't scroll to the left anymore. Okay, so we've got that nailed and that's completely done. What we could do is start playing with the background color for each section. And to do that, what we're gonna do is add a trigger. And so what this trigger is going to do is it's a conditional trigger. So it's going to be a chain. And what chain will allow us to do is add an action where the changes of the property of one layer kind of change the other property. So if we swipe with the scroll, we want the background color to change. It's sort of like a chain, which makes sense on why they call it chains. So let's go ahead and actually do that. Uh, the way we're going to do this chain is right here. When we select the trigger and add chain, you can see that uh, we can kind of target what we want the sort of uh, initial behavior or initial factor being. And what we're going to do is select the swipe, which is already selected and select scroll. Um, and what we could do here is dependent on what we want to sort of chain, we want to chain the position of our scroll. And what that will allow us to do is depending on how far we've scrolled, we want to just sort of have that gradient effect of just changing the background. So we'll go ahead and select this plus sign, which will trigger a response. And the response we're wanting to make is a color change. So we'll select color. And then you'll notice that dependent on the trigger or the response I select, it will automatically select a layer. Uh, now this is only true if I have that specific layer selected. Uh, being that I have swipe selected, it's going to automatically set swipe, but that's not what we want. We wanna select the rectangle one, and I don't like this name one bit, so uh, let's change the name to background, and it will automatically update background here. So what's happening here is we have a range, and if you look at the chain, we have scroll of swipe, has a chain to the color of the background. Um, and so since we do know that the width of our device is 414, we're going to go ahead and set the max sort of width of 414 here or max scroll of 414. So what happens is that if we're on a range or a scroll of swipe of zero, we're going to have a specific background color. If we're on 414, it's going to have a different color, meaning that the first color is going to be this purple ish color and the second color is going to be a blue color and anything in between it sort of has a blend of the pink or reddish color with the blue so the hex code that we're adding for when we're on zero is the following which is going to be a hex e zero seven one nine e and then when we're on step two it's going to have this blue color which is aac six fc 
like so. All right, so if we start to swipe now, you can see that the color changes once we've reached that scroll of 414 and anything in between blends the two colors. If we wanted to add a third uh, property or a third kind of range, we could do the same by adding this plus sign and this will give us a range too. So we'll do the exact same thing, but for now what we're gonna do is from 414 all the way to 828, we're going to change the color. The 414 color will stay as this blue color, so I'll copy paste that. And the last screen or the last panel color is going to have this greenish color, which is 7FD6C2. So now when we swipe from the first panel to the second panel, it will turn blue. And from the second panel to the third panel, it will turn green, like so. Perfect. Now we do have a lot of animations uh, when it comes to this sort of chain effect. So we'll build upon that. You can also change these names. So if we just double click color, we can say change, oops, background. And this will change the background. All right, perfect. So we can move on now. And what I wanna do is add a sort of rotation to this image here once we start swiping. So it's going to have that same uh, sort of chain effect, uh, but it's going to like rotate the image kind of looking like it's being pulled away. This yellow hand is pulling the card up. Uh, so let's do that. What I'll do is select this actual step one image, and then I will add a response. And now this response is going to be specific to the rotate. And what we do here is sort of similar to what we did earlier, right? We have the range, so we can set a zero, a 414, and then zero is going to have the uh, rotation of a zero, and then 414 is going to have a rotation of negative 20. Regarding the sort of orientation, whether or the counterclockwise or clockwise, we're going to switch it to where it's counterclockwise. So it's going to be going from the, I guess, right left ish. I, I don't know. That's the best way I could explain it. Uh, so that's going to do it here. So if we start swiping, you can see that this yellow hand looks like it's starting to pull the card away. Like, give me that. Right. So that's that one effect. All right. So we could say, um, image one effect here and let's make this a bit wider since we're not messing with the ui anymore as much uh, so next what we could do is add a so next what we could do is we can add an additional rotate to this x uh, now this is totally optional um, i am going to select this x right here this tiny one uh, which is called x copy and I will add a rotate here. And this is a very subtle effect. This really doesn't add too much value, but if you're really into the detail, uh, you can kind of add this. So at zero, it's going to be zero. At 414, it's going to be set to 200. And so what happens now is as we rotate, you can see that this X here starts to rotate with the screen. So it's a very subtle animation. You can do this for all the kind of X's and pluses that we have, but it does add a lot of extra work. Um, if you're building an actual product and you really want to look into the detail, definitely um, look into incorporating the small details, but for this tutorial, we're not really going to get into that. Along with the changing of the screens or the panels, we need to find a way that we can indicate to the user that, hey, you've switched the panel, and so this indicator at the top will go from step one to step two. I'll go ahead and open up this progress, select step one, and I will add an opacity. So the range of zero is going to have an opacity of 100. And then if we've scrolled to 414, we're gonna set the opacity to 30. So now when we've scrolled to step two, this should dim out or fade out. So it shouldn't be as bright. We can do the exact same thing for step two. We'll select the step two layer, and then we'll add a response of opacity. And now this is going to be the exact same when it's from zero to 414. Uh, except it's going to be reversed. So when it's zero, it's going to have an opacity of 30. And when it's 414, it's going to have an opacity of 100. So now you can see that when we've swiped that second panel, this opacity of the second uh, indicator is completely lit up. And you can now tell that it is on step two, if you haven't really noticed since the uh, text and everything else has changed. Okay, so this is just an additional indicator. We're gonna do the exact same thing, honestly, for step three. So now when we get to step three, we need this to indicate that we're on step three. So I'll go ahead and select uh, the step three box here, and I'll select an opacity, 
and then from zero it's going to be changed it's going to be 414 it's to 828 and if you're still wondering how these numbers are coming from it's dependent on the viewport or the device's width so the entire width of this phone which is an iphone xr is 414 meaning our layers have a width of 414 so every time we swipe we're moving everything by 414 so this is currently at zero this is at 414 and the third layer is at 828 so this is where these sort of numbers are coming from it's just the width of the device multiplied by the amount of sort of uh, panels we currently have which is just three okay so to keep going the step three um when it's on step two it's going to have an opacity of 30 and when it reaches 828 which is step three it's going to have an opacity of 100. so now let's take a look when we're on step one step one is lit step two step two is lit and then step three step three is lit now step two isn't unlit after or isn't dimmed down after we have reached step three so we'll add an additional opacity for step two select step two add an additional response of opacity and then for this one, what's going to happen is at 414, we're going to have an opacity of 100. And then at uh, 828, we're going to have an opacity of 30. Save that. So now when we swipe, the indicators match exactly which panel we're on. Perfect. Let's go ahead and move on. Uh, the next thing we're going to work on is this blue ball. Um, and this blue ball gets larger when we reach the second panel. So every time we swipe, boom, the blue balls gets bigger uh, and then it shrinks. So let's work on the blue balls. We'll go ahead and select this blue ball, which is located in step one. And what we'll do is add a scale response. And the scale response is going to be from zero to 414. Uh, now, what's going to happen is the default width and height is 100 by 100. So we can already set that here, 100 by 100. And then when we, when we and then when we've reached the second panel, uh, what's going to happen is we're going to increase the width and the height by 600. So let's save that. We're also going to move it, but let's just stick with the scale for now. So when we start swiping, you can see the blue ball is getting larger, which looks great. But then it is staying in that position. We want to add an all uh, an additional chain, which will move it to the right a bit, so that it would look kind of covering half the uh, image here but it will be in the background so we'll add an additional response which is going to be move which allows us to move the element and so move is going to have a zero of for x going to be 145 and then for the y is 147 and then when we've scrolled to 414 the x is going to be adjusted to 360 and the y will be set to zero so now when we start swiping you can see that it does uh, cover the top uh, what we could do here is we can add a response called reorder okay never mind we can't so in the chain you are limited to the responses you can select uh, which is reorder is disabled but what we could do is if we minimize step one we could put step two on top of step one and so it goes from two one three so now when we swipe the blue ball is now in the background Perfect. Uh, let's keep going. What's going to happen for step three is we have this coin, which uh, scales up and it also spins. So let's go ahead and do those animations. So we'll go ahead and select this coin, which can be found in the step three. So we'll select a scale. And so the first range is going to be 414 and the second range is going to be 828. And so the width of when it's 414 is going to be 20 and the height is going to be 20.36 and then when it's 828 the width is going to be 120 and the height is going to be 122.16 so now when we start swiping you could see that the scale of this coin is getting larger once we enter this third screen so it's a very subtle animation but it's a pretty cool one perfect uh, we're also going to uh, rotate the hand so the hand kind of does the exact same thing that this uh, sort of card does right it goes up but the hand is going to come down so it's going to be a reverse we'll select the hand in step three and we'll select a rotate and it's going to have 414 to 828 and now the angle is going to be set at negative 20 initially and then zero 
when it's reached A28. So now you can see that the hand kind of comes down once we enter. So it's very subtle animations, but this is what kind of sets your design apart and gives it some life. Perfect. Uh, lastly, for the chain, before we move on to the other animations, we've got this cross, this purplish plus cross sign. Uh, what this does is it spins as we enter the third panel. So we can select, let's go here. We can select this red or purple cross, pinkish cross. I don't even know my colors. Magenta, probably. Uh, we can select a rotate response, and it's going to have a initial of 414 for the scroll, and then 828. Uh, now the angles for 414 is going to be zero, and then the angle for when it's reached 828 is going to be, going to be 225. So 414 is going to be set to zero, 828 is going to be set to 225. So now let's start swiping, and you can see that as I enter, you can see that purple starts spinning, that purple cross starts spinning into view. Perfect. That's going to do it for the chain. We can close out of this chain. Uh, I didn't continue naming because it just takes time, but we can close out of that now. Uh, we can move on and add another trigger. So one of the triggers that I do want to add is for our blue ball. This initially kind of just floats in the background, so I want to add that animation. The trigger to create this is just going to be a start trigger, meaning when uh, we've opened up the application or started the application or you know started the animation this is just going to run in the background so i will select blue ball which is back here um, and i will add a response of move now move is going to be set to a y of 40 which brings it up here um, if i set it back to zero oops okay it looks like it's not doing it so anyway set it back to 40 um and what's gonna happen is gonna be set to 40 and then I wanna bring it down to negative 40 and then 40, negative 40, back and forth. Uh, so what this means is that I kind of need to uh, look into creating a repeat or a loop, which ultimately repeat is down here. So we can enable this repeat. Uh, and what happens now is if I select infinite repeat, this will just run every single time. I wanna increase the duration so it's a lot slower and not as snappy. So you can see that it floats up, but now I wanna bring it back down. Uh, what I'll do is I'll copy and paste what I did, but if I make the keyframe larger, you can see that uh, the interval here is going to have some space, so the gaps are going to be filled with it returning. So let me actually delete that second property or second response, but uh, for this repeat, I want to increase the interval by two, not one, but two. So now when we copy and paste, I'll add a delay to the second response of two. Uh, meaning it's, start, it's starting to just kind of fill the gaps. And the thing I want to do for when I fill the gaps or I've reached that limit is I want to reset this blue ball to where it was, which is negative 40. Okay. So if I play it, it's not doing what I want it to do. I promise it's supposed to not do that. But I think that if I, let me look at this move here. I'm setting it to a Y of 4. Okay, I know the issue. A Y of 40, but the issue is this move 2 is going to be move by. So move 2, this is actually a good part to explain. Move 2 moves it to a Y of 40, but move by is going to move the Y by 40 pixels, adding additional 40. I also need to do the exact same thing for the second response. So move by 40, the first one's going to be 40 uh, Y, and the second one's going to be negative 40. So now it kind of just floats here in the background behind this card. And when I swipe, you can see that it continues kind of floating in the background, adding some life to the second panel as well. Perfect. Uh, let's go ahead and close out of this and we can just call this blue ball float. Uh, next, we have another start. Um, and now what this starts going to do is just for our second panel, I just want this image here to kind of just hover similar to what the blue balls are doing. So it's going to be an, pretty much an almost copy, like a replica, uh, but it's going to be less emphasized. So I'll scroll to, let's close this a bit. I'll scroll to the second image here and I'll add a move and we're going to move by uh, a Y of 16 pixels, like so. And I'll increase the duration by two. We've done this before, right? So I'll go ahead and hit repeat and increase the interval by two seconds and increase the infinite repeat actually. Um, and now we need to do the exact same. So copy paste, 
change the y to negative six, but then add a start delay of two seconds just so that I can start filling up the gaps. So now when I swipe, you can see that this image here just kind of floats um, and it's very subtle. Just add a more life to our project. One thing I do want to mention is if you downloaded this project and you're following along, the text might be different. I am using Montserrat. I think that's how you say it. Montserrat, uh, which is a Google font. So you can go ahead and download it and be fine with it. I'll also link a way to install this font on your iPhone or Android. Um, and it's a protopile link and they kind of teach you how to do that. So just make sure you uh, download the fonts if you're not liking the font you're using. Now in our step two, we have sort of like a line, line, line. And what these lines are is this right here. So let me show you these. We have sticks. And if I enable or set the opacity to 100 of these sticks, it's sort of like a line, line, letting you know that the clap or you actually clapped. So these are kind of um, going to be animated for the step two. So it's going to kind of go tick, 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 and then a flash and then tick, tick, tick and so on. So you'll see here in a second what I'm trying to do. I'll go ahead and create a new trigger and I'll call this start. Uh, and so for the animation we just did, what we could do is call step two image float. And then this new animation we're doing is uh, sticks animation. And I should probably come up with a better name and convention, but I don't know. So what I'm doing here is I'll select image one, which represents stick, and I'll add an opacity. And what this opacity is going to do is set the opacity to 100%. We're having a duration set to zero because this is going to be sort of like an instant flash. So this is going to like turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. Uh, I will set a repeat with the intervals set to 4.6 and set an infinite repeat. All right. So now I want to do the exact same things for the second and the third one with a bit of a delay on there. I'll go ahead and select step two and I'll add an opacity response. And this is going to be very similar to what we did earlier. Setting the opacity to 100, the duration is zero. The start delay is going to be 0.6. Then we're adding a repeat with an interval of 4.6 and adding an infinite repeat. Finally, we'll go down to this one right here. So select the third one and the exact same thing that we're doing. You can probably copy paste and then just change the layer, but this is kind of just, you know, it's practice, right? We'll get used to the software and get better at protopy. Setting the opacity to 100, duration is zero, repeat enabled, and the interval is going to be 4.6. Now the start delay is going to be double, so 0 0.6 times two, which is 1.2. Now if I run this real quick and then swipe real quickly, you could kind of see that animation occur. So boom, boom, boom. So these sticks are gonna go tick, 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 disappear, tick, 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 disappear, tick, tick, tick. Okay, so after we've reached all of them to have an opacity of zero, I want them off again. And what we could do here is create a trigger, so, or a response. So I'll set opacity here, and I'll set this back to zero and I'll set the duration to zero, and I'll set the delay to 4.4, and I'll give it a repeat with an interval of 4.4. Now this is going to be set for all of them. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste this the second time, and then I'll switch this to two, and then we'll select this second sticks image, and I'll copy paste this opacity again, and I'll select or search for three, and select this three image. Probably should change the names. It's a lot better if I do, but um, kind of works for me here. So I'll say hide, hide, hide. And then this is just show, show, show. So this is going to show one, two, three, hide all of them all at once, and then repeat one, two, three. So now if I swipe, you can see that they're all showing right now. They should hide, and then one, two, three, and then hide, and then one, two, three. Perfect, so it kind of just goes in a loop um, of it hiding. So I don't like the duration on here. So make sure you set the duration to zero. Uh, that way that we can kind of hide and then it's all instant, right? There's no smoothness to this. That's the whole point. So we've got smooth in the background, but then this sticks one is just very direct, right? Stick, 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 hide, stick, stick, stick. 
and then hide. And this is going to repeat an infinite amount of times. Make sure you enable infinite repeat on every single one. I think this one's missing. Yeah, infinite repeat. So it should just repeat on and on. All right. Now, what I'm going to do next is the next button. Uh, when I've reached this step, I want to change this next button to say complete and then change the background color to a black color. And then when I'm on step one, step two, I want to leave it saying next. Uh, this is going to call for us to use a range property. Um, and so with the range property is kind of similar to like an if statements, if else statements. Uh, but you'll see how it works here in a second. So I'll go ahead and select a trigger. But first, I want to select the swipe right here. So I'll select swipe, add trigger, and I will set a range. Now the range is going to be is if A is less than or greater to the scroll of the swipe. So if A is set to 828, then I am going to uh, set the text color of the button to say complete. Now to do that, I will select this next button, I'll add a response, and I'll select text. I'll update the text to say complete, and that will do it there. So if I swipe, swipe, complete gets changed, swipe back. Complete doesn't get changed because we need to run another range to change it back to next. So before we do that, actually, I want to change the background color. So I'll select the button again, which is already selected. I will change the color and I will give it a color of text, which is going to be white. So FFF and then a fill, which is going to be 383A48. Oh, I put two. All right, so 383A48. So now when we swipe, swipe again, complete, and with the color added. I do have a duration on the color change, so I kind of want the text to change halfway through changing the color, which means we'll need to add a delay of 0.1 since the duration of changing the color is a total of 0.2. All right, so it's a lot smoother. I will copy exactly what we have for this range. And this range is going to be a if statement specifically for the first two screens, setting it back to next. So now it's going to be um, if the scroll of swipe is less than or greater to, did I just say less than or greater? No, less than or equal to B, which is eight to seven, which is one off that eight to eight. We're going to one to run the following, changing the text to next. I wonder if I said less than or greater to. Less than or greater to. Less than or equal to. I don't know. It just sounds so weird. Okay. Um, and then we'll change it to next and then changing the color back to what it was originally, which is going to have a fill of F3, F6, E6. And then the text color is going to be that black color that we had earlier. So now when we swipe step two, still next, and then swipe to our last one, it's complete. Swipe back to step two, it's next, complete, next. So it's only complete when we have reached that eight to eight and anything less than eight to seven is going to have next. All right, so first range is set complete. And the second range represents set next. All right, we'll close these two and then we can move on to adding uh, the functionality of clicking on the next button to go next. So we'll add a trigger here and we actually wanna select the button first. So we'll add a button trigger of tap, which means we're tapping the button. Uh, and then we're adding a conditional, which is um, an if statement. So the first if statement is going to be is if the swipe of scroll is equal to a value of zero, which pretty much just means if we are on the first screen, what we're going to do is select the swipe here and automatically adjust the swipe. So what this means is if we select swipe here, we can select a scroll and leave it scroll two. So we'll scroll to 414. We'll go ahead and leave the easing to ease in and out, cubic, duration, point two. We don't really mind um, since it looks good. So what should happen is if I click next, it should scroll to 414, similarly to when I scroll you know, by swipe. So clicking next will automatically scroll us to 414. If we click next again, nothing happens because the statement or the if statement right here doesn't even run. Um, and plus, if it did run, if it was true, it would just stay here at 414. So what we'll do is add another condition. And this condition is going to say the following. So if the swipe of scroll is equal to a value of 414, meaning we're on the second screen, 
we are going to add a response of scroll, which will take us to 828. Now I did not select the scroll layer initially, so I'll have to select the layer here and we can just say swipe, or I did not select the swipe layer, sorry. Uh, so I'll have to automatically or manually select it here. Now, if I take a look, if I click next, it'll take us to 414. And now since we are on a scroll swipe of 414, it should take us to 828, which it does. And it takes us to this final screen. So we can swipe by hand going left and right, or we can click the next button to go right. Now, some of the onboarding processes have a back arrow, we, what you can click and just go back. Um, it is a bit redundant for us since we could already swipe, but if you did want to add that back arrow, you'll just add the back arrow. You'll do the exact same thing that we did for this tap to go to the next, but you'll just do it in reverse, having us just go back. And then you can hide this uh, back arrow once we've reached a scroll swipe of zero, meaning we're on step one. The final thing we're going to do is make this uh, coin rotate um, in sort of a three-dimensional um, atmosphere, I would say. So what we could do is add a trigger. Let's go ahead and select the coin first. We can add a trigger and we can call this trigger start. Or we're not calling it start, but it's just going to be start. So when our app starts, this is just going to run continuously. Now, what we're going to do is select 3D rotate. And I didn't select the coin, but we can search for the coin here. Now, the 3D rotate, we're going to rotate it by 300. And then the origin or the direction is going to be this first one. Pivot is origin, perspective depth is 400. Um, what I will do is I'll increase the duration since I don't want it to be really fast. I'll select a repeat and I'll select infinite repeat. So if I go to this right here, you can see that it's just spinning now. But I forgot to add a 360, which means that it's spinning in 360 degrees. Uh, with a full circle instead of 300. So now it's much more smoother when it spins. So it spins an entire 360, comes back to its original position, spins an additional 360. All right, perfect. So that's actually going to do it for this prototype. If you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like, uh, subscribe. If you want more videos regarding to actual, actually creating prototypes, uh, let me know in the description. I do uh, like stepping away from uh, code once in a while and focusing on design. Uh, so definitely let me know if you want to see more of these. If you actually want to run this through your device, you need to download the Protopie player and then just scan this and you should be good to go. That's going to do it for me. Have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe out there and yeah, enjoy your day.